In this lesson, we are going to cover oblique asymptotes, and it's actually really exciting because after this lesson, uh, you will be like, amped up with power when it comes to working with rational functions and their graphs. So um, let's just uh, get it over with and, and uh, empower ourselves. Um, before I actually start, I want to um, tackle two questions that we have, or I want to introduce the two questions we have. The first one we want to ask ourselves is, when do oblique asymptotes occur? And the second one is, if we know an oblique asymptote is going to occur, we want to know how to find what the equation of the oblique asymptote is. Okay, so just in case you forgot, we talked about oblique asymptotes very briefly in the beginning when I first introduced rational functions. Okay, oblique asymptotes, um, you know, I'll just show you a picture of it. That is an oblique asymptote, okay? You see how it's not, it's not horizontal, it's slant. So another way of, uh, of calling an oblique asymptote is a slant asymptote. Okay, so it's slanted as opposed to a horizontal line. But what's similar is that this function, okay, is approaching this asymptote, okay, the bleak asymptote. Usually it's horizontal, the ones we worked with before, and the function's approaching it. Well, as you go towards positive infinity or negative infinity, the function is approaching this oblique asymptote or slant asymptote. So back to our first two questions, how do we know when occurs? And how do you find what the equation is? So the first answer is actually pretty simple. They occur with rational functions in which the degree of the numerator uh, exceeds the degree of the denominator by exactly one. Okay, so you see how, for the example, we have degree two in the numerator, degree one in the denominator, then this function, uh, the graph of this function, will have an oblique asymptote. We're gonna explore why uh, that's the case, but uh, that, that's the, the fact that I wanna tell you right away. Okay, so now we wanna know how did I know that this function had an oblique asymptote y equals three x minus one? Okay, how do we know it's y plus 3x minus a very beautiful graph, by the way. How can we find out the equation of the oblique asymptote? You know what? Let's take a look. So we're going to work with a different example, f of x equals x squared minus 5 over x plus 4. So, you know, I'll just fill in these blanks, uh, these simple ones. The degree of the numerator is 2, and the degree of the denominator is 1. Hence, there is an oblique asymptote. You can say slant asymptote as well, but I'll go with oblique. Okay, so the key thing here we're gonna do is the, the step that's coming up. Instead of uh, expressing the rational function as a over x over b over x, we are going to change it into quotient form, and that's gonna blow our mind. Now, just in case you forgot quotient form, that's basically what we did in the first unit, which was going from a mixed fraction, sort of going from an improper fraction to a mixed fraction. Okay, that's what quotient form really means: mixed, oops, improper to mixed, improper mixed. So, how do you go from improper to mix? You need to know the quotient and the remainder. Okay, so uh, let's do long division, just in case you forgot synthetic. So x, I'm going to multiply x to get x squared, and that's 4x, subtract, negative 4x, bring out the minus 5, subtract by 4, just to multiply negative 4x, and this is negative 16. And this will be 11, the remainder is 11. You can check by taking x minus 4 and multiplying it by x plus 4 and then adding by 11. So that's going to be x squared minus 16 plus 11, which is x squared minus 5. Beautiful. So quickly checked into my head. This is correct. I did the long division correctly. So the remainder is x minus 4 plus 11 over x plus 4. All right. So I went from uh, basically, you know what? This is basically what you saw uh, in, in the first chapter. You're writing it in uh, quotient form. And in, in the first chapter, you uh, added a restriction. So you can add that restriction if, if you feel but um, if you feel like it, but I, I feel like uh, that's not the big idea here. 
So I, if, if we were in the classroom, I would just make you stare at this for five minutes. Okay, and you can get something out of this. Okay, because x squared minus five all over x plus four is equal to x minus four plus 11 over x plus four. Like this is shouting something at you. This is it's screaming something at you. So I'm really hoping you can see it. Okay, so as x as the magnitude of x, okay? Now why would I write the magnitude of x is approaching infinity? Because I'm trying to show you what the oblique asymptote is, right? I wanna go to the far right. I wanna go to the far left of the graph. So it makes sense, I'm gonna use this statement to help me prove whatever the oblique asymptote is. Like this just seems like a good idea. Okay, so you know what, I'm gonna go back one second. Like this is the graph, right? If I'm trying to prove, or if I'm trying to find what the oblique asymptote is, let's explore the end behavior, okay? Let's explore the end behavior. So even if you have no clue what to do here, you know what, just writing this seems like a good idea. Okay, as x approaches infinity, guess what? This, this term here, this 11 over x plus four, What does 11 over x plus 4 become? What is it approaching? 11 over x plus 4. Hmm. It's approaching 0 because x is becoming really, really large in magnitude, whether it's positive or negative. Who cares? The denominator will be significantly larger than x, which means this is basically 0. And if this is 0, what are we saying? The end behavior of this function, boom, it's just x minus 4, right? Because this is negligible. As x becomes really, really large, this is gone. That's it. So the, this function is behaving like x minus 4. It's not exactly x minus 4 because there's like a slight distortion. There because this is going to contribute ever like a very, very, very small amount. So it's not exactly x minus 4, but it's super duper duper close. So... Uh, that's what the math here is saying. x squared minus 5 all over x plus 4 is equal, essentially equal to x minus 4 when x is uh, very, very large. So this statement, okay, if this statement makes sense, then the function has the oblique asymptote of x minus 4. So you know what, let's take a quick, quick break here for a second. That's why every time you have a degree, um, let's say uh, the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator by one, you will always have an oblique asymptote because if that quotient is always going to be degree one, right? So that's why you always have an oblique asymptote if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator by one. Now, let's explore further. What if the degree of the numerator is greater than that of the denominator by 2? Then the quotient will be a degree of 2. And guess what? You'll have a parabolic asymptote. What if the degree of the numerator is greater than the denominator by 3? Well, then you'll have a cubic asymptote because your, your quotient is a cubic, right? This, okay, this will be negligible, okay? Remainder over divisor, as x becomes really, really large, it will become zero, okay? Because in the uh, previous chapter, we said that the degree of the remainder is always less than that of the divisor, okay? So what that is saying, this is always going to be true. You know what? We can say this. Yeah, let's blow that up. It's so beautiful. So as... This is beautiful, you know, it's worth worth writing. That, that is the case. This is always true, okay, because the degree of the uh, remainder is less than that of the divisor, which means as x approaches infinity, denominator outgrows numerator, which means this uh, quotient approaches zero. And if this approaches zero, then we're saying as f of x uh, uh, sorry, as x approaches in, um, infinity or negative infinity, uh, f of x, the end behavior f of x will be essentially q of x. Very beautiful. So take a minute and digest that because the quotient is always going to give you 
the oblique asymptote or the parabolic asymptote or the cubic asymptote, whatever the asymptote, it is, it is gonna be it, okay? The quotient's gonna give you that, that beautiful asymptote. It's gonna give you the end behavior of the rational function. So I don't really want to spoil it because we're not done the, the lesson yet. But really, after what I've just said, you can now graph any rational function, even if the degree of the numerator is greater than that of the denominator. All you have to do is expression in quotient form and find out how the end behavior of the function because it will be whatever the quotient is. Okay. Uh, now, after you find the oblique asymptote, you want to under you want to see if the function is approaching from above or from below. So what you do is you take a look at this term here. In this case, it's 11 over x plus 4. As x is approaching infinity, 11 over x plus, 11 over x plus 4 is slightly greater than 0. Okay. So what that means is that you're going to take this oblique asymptote and then add a small little number to it. Okay, so if you can add a small number to it, a very, very small positive number to it, then the function is going to approach the oblique asymptote from above, right? So if I can here, this is the oblique asymptote, but you're going to add a very, very small positive number, that means it's going to approach it from above. Because 11 over x plus 4 is some, some dinky positive number. So it's going to, yeah, so your function is approaching from above. Whereas, if x is approaching negative infinity, 11 over x plus 4 will be some really, really small, uh, sorry, small negative number, okay? So unfortunately, the function will not be, will not be on the oblique asymptote, but it'll be very close, and it'll be approaching from below, because you're tacking on a, a, a very, very small negative number. So that will bring it just below the oblique asymptote, but you're going to get closer and closer and closer, because this is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so function approaches a bit from below. Okay, so hopefully now you're comfortable graphing any rational function that's given to you. Okay, uh, if you're still having a bit of trouble, uh, I would recommend you to just create some rational functions uh, that have oblique asymptotes and go graph them. And I would also give you, or uh, I'll also ask you to graph some rational functions that have parabolic asymptotes. If you don't want to graph them, at least just use graphing software and just create random examples and just, just be wowed because um, parabolic asymptotes are cool. In fact, you can even show yourself a cubic asymptote. Okay? Have fun!